I don't know how many of you are blessed to have your own home. But last year, in the month of October, 50,000 Americans lost their homes because of foreclosures. Over 300,000 homes a year, people losing their homes because of foreclosures. Southern California last year, San Diego, hundreds of thousands of homes lost. In the city of Louisiana, 500 homes destroyed Hurricane Katrina. Millions of homes lost in earthquakes in China and all over. So the security is not here. The security is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the obedience of Allah and his messenger. Banks, airlines. You know what airlines, they, one airline announced, shake. No more peanuts. <laughs> peanuts? I'm serious. One airline said, no more peanuts. No, they, they still give you soda at about another half an hour. I'm saying. They used to give you, man, they used to feed you. And brothers and sisters, I'm saying, I went to uh, Northwest Airline last week on my way to Minneapolis. I bring my two bags. They said, okay, the first bag, okay, you got to pay $25 for the second bag. $25? So, brothers and sisters, I'm saying that if you're putting your hope in this society, you will lose. You will lose. The attack is against humanity. The attack is against the world. These satanic, these devil forces know exactly what they're doing. And they want to lead the world to destruction. And the only one that stand there to stop them are Muslims. If, if the Muslims will stand up and practice our being. I want to quote one thing and then I'm going to ask you for some money. Good book to read called The Death of the West by Patrick Buchanan. Buchanan. Huh? Patrick Buchanan. Now, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Our country is changing. This is why a lot of people are nervous. Two things that happened to our country. One is called the browning of America. The what? The browning. The Browning of America. Let me tell you what the Browning of America is. Did you know that right now, 50% of the population of America, five and younger, are minorities? By the year 2060, white people will be a minority in this country. And many of those minorities are becoming Muslims. Right now in New York City, there's a law pending in the le legislation, legislation that will make the two days of the Eid a holiday in New York City so that every public school is closed for the two days of the Eid. You say, well, why? Because, because Columbia University in the year 2000 did a study that revealed that 10% of the student population in the public school of New York City are Muslims. And another report said 12%. That means between 120,000 and 150,000 Muslim children in the public school of New York City. Islam has grown into such a degree that even in the politics of New York City, we have, we have Muslims. Some of them you know, some of, you, some, some of them that you don't know. Allah gives you a hint in the Quran. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنِ يَكْتُمُوا إِمَانَهُ And one, a man, a believing man of the family of Pharaoh, who hid his faith. And you got people, brothers and sisters, believe it. This is your brother telling you in positions that they're Muslims. But because of the political atmosphere, they hide their faith. I'm not talking about Obama. <laughs> Say, I know you. I, I know you. Don't, don't, don't do that. 
Next thing you know, Imam Salah's on the front page. <laughs> Obama's a real Muslim. No. I am not talking about Obama. Not. Not. Not talking about Obama. Not. So, brothers and sisters, I close with this. This masjid. I love this masjid. Why I love this masjid? Is it about Rahman? No. I love this masjid because it's Beit Allah. It's the house of Allah. Doesn't matter where it is. North Carolina. Doesn't matter. Durham. Doesn't matter. It's the house of Allah. Why should we love the house of Allah? Because Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ahabu bilad illallah masajiduha and the most beloved of the cities to Allah are the masjids. Brothers and sisters, you know what? Allah is not interested in you building some fancy masjid that looks good. He's interested in us building masjids <coughs> that are functioning. Masjids that you see the men there at Fajr. Masjid packed with people worshiping Allah. Masjid packed with learning classes, reading Quran, Teach me the Quran, the Arabic language. I got a haircut Friday at uh, Timbuktu a Barbershop. This is one, two, three blocks from Masjid Atakwa. Got a haircut before Juma prayer. I'm sitting in the chair, getting my haircut, and in comes an African American sister and elderly sister. And remind me to tell you about the two things in America. I told you about the browning of America, right? Remind me to tell you about the second one. So this sister comes in the Masjid. Uh, to the to the barbershop elderly and I'm getting my hair cut, African American sister. And she walks by, Saraj, Imam Saraj, that you? I said, yes. Oh Imam Saraj, subhanAllah, Imam, you have to help me. I said what? I want to go to Egypt. And the reason I want to go to Egypt, I want to study. But I don't want to study the dunya. I am a person of the hereafter. I'm a hereafter person. And I'm going to study Quran, and I'm going to study the Arabic language. And he said, Imam, I, I want you to help. I don't have no money now. I'm going to save my money. And I said, okay, sister. I'm going to help you go to Egypt so you can study. Now, but, and, and then so she goes, and then a brother comes in. His name is Muhammad. I know Muhammad. Muhammad came in looking real sharp, man. He coming in, and he had a nice suit on, and had one of those straw hats. And you know, he's stepping, he's like, Salaam alaikum. I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, that yesterday I celebrated my 80th birthday. My 80th birthday. Now, you know what's happening right now in America, brothers and sisters, around the world? It is what you call the graying of America. America is getting browner, which means darker. <laughs> Some people get really excited. Because they're not afraid of Muslims making prayer or wearing kufis or wearing kimar. But what they are afraid of are the political and economic implications, the political power of a Muslim group who knows their rights and know how to influence policy, American foreign policy, and domestic policy, and they know when these Muslims wake up, they will wake up the masses of the people, and the people will learn the truth. Yeah, people are afraid of that. 